And we actually had to confirm that this is a real footage. On Monday, before the Arizona State Supreme Court upheld the uh, total abortion ban that was passed initially in 1864, State Senator Anthony Kern led a prayer circle on the Senate floor. And uh, this guy, Kern, is uh, currently under investigation uh, because he tried to serve as a fake elector for Trump in 2020. Well, God said it was okay. So here we go. Now, if you couldn't make out what they were saying, it was because they're speaking in tongues. And look, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't. I, I, oh, it wasn't Arabic. They aren't trying to impose Sharia law on all of us. That's right. Because I've been told that that's the thing that we should be very concerned about. That kind of dogmatic they, when religion they were on controlling their knees, women. Bowing back and forth. Were they facing Mecca? Because if they were, that should be, uh, we should outlaw that. If they weren't, then we should let them continue to do that on the seal of the state of Arizona in the middle of the Senate floor. Nut jobs. Um, I mean, look, I don't I, I don't begrudge people uh, want to do prayer circles. Uh, in fact, I, I once uh, I was at a job once uh, on a sitcom where we had prayer circle before uh, each show. I thought it was a little bit it was interesting. Uh, you know, um, what's we're praying that we are really funny. I just thought like, well, maybe there's some other things, you know, God may be busy, but <laughs> Um, but aside from that, um, this is you couldn't have a better manifestation of where the impetus for such a law comes from. And this is this is at the heart of the Republican Party. Forty percent of Republican voters are uh, self-identified, at least uh, evangelicals. I think it's, it could even be more. Um, this these are the ones who are dictating what the Republican Party is and does. And again, I have no problem with people. If whatever they want to believe, that's fine. But when they begin to impose these beliefs on the rest of society and these beliefs end up uh, essentially disenfranchising people, whether it's their vote or their economic power or their um liberty in this sense um this is problematic and yeah and i should say not just uh, uh um uh I I imposing on their liberty but imposing on their liberty or not for the benefit of society but for uh, according to their religious principles there's a difference if you can make a demonstrable um uh, argument that this is a benefit to society but we know what happens when you outlaw abortion. You, you, you disempower um, mothers and you disempower people and you, uh, you, you keep them poor, you keep them uh, um, under the thumb of other people or they end up dying um, because they, they seek an abortion somewhere else. We, we know the implications of this. Yeah, it's also uh, technically, especially what they were doing there, praying on the seal of the state of Arizona's you know, logo or whatever. That's not constitutional. We have separation of church and state in this country. It's a foundational uh, plank of this country's constitution, or at least that's what we're supposed to be engendering. Um, that, that I mean, I'm going to be authoritarian and say that kind of display should not be allowed in a government building because we have separation of church and state, and that is something that should be protected. Here is, uh, and I know this guy, this is amazing. Like the, 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 the Republicans are so aware mm -hmm. that they have caught the car and they just, they came up on that car too fast and their face is smashing into the back of that car because the American public is not with them. They have deluded themselves for years that the American public was against abortion rights. 
And now that they are they have opened up the Pandora's box, even when Donald Trump goes out uh, two days ago and tries to split the baby by saying, well, States it is rights. what it is and people can uh, decide what they want. Um, in Arizona, the people of 1864 have decided what the people in 2024 want in terms of uh, rights for abortion. But nevertheless, even when you make it a popular uh, decision, even when you put this up to a vote, you're denying the fundamental rights of about half the population. But you've got to slough it off in some way. Here is uh, Mark Simone. And I remember this dude from back in, uh, I don't know if he's still on WABC, but he will say just about anything. Um, and here he is on Larry Kudlow's show. And uh, this, is, this is sort of like akin to the, the Ben Shapiro, like, well, if, you're, if you can't get uh, flood insurance for your home on the coast, just sell it to somebody. This is sort of like has that same quality. Uh, here it is. I mean, this is tricky business. How does this play out? Uh, it hurts Trump for a few days, and then people start to realize this is not the worst thing in the world. He may come out. He'll come out against us. I'm going to. Oh, no, maybe he won't. Uh, but, but remember, his point was the legislature, Mark. He didn't mention the court. So this is tricky. State Supreme Court, does that qualify as a state decision? Yeah, uh, it, that's what it is to be pro-choice. Yeah. The states can decide. If you had to travel to another state to get an abortion, it's not the worst thing in the world. Hopefully this is a very rare occurrence in your life. Once in your life, maybe it would do it. Uh, buying a bus ticket to go somewhere to get it is not the worst thing in the world. To your point. But I, I mean... mean that we're, the liberals are always told they're out of touch with uh, the <laughs> common man. Um, I've seen maps. The state of Texas is pretty large. Um, the center of the country has lo a lot of land, and it's not really uh, easy to go state to state in the same way it would be like from going from Massachusetts to Rhode Island or something like that. I mean, this is a cumbersome process, especially well, when anti-abortion legislation is concentrated in red states. So it could be a very long tr journey to getting to another state by bus. But Which is aside, also a financial, a financial of issue. Of course, exactly. I mean, That's yeah. the point. Is that it, it's it's cumbersome, but the fact is, is that under the paid leave uh, um, uh, bill that didn't, does not exist in any of these states, um, and aside from the fact that uh, you know, who knows, uh, hundreds of dollars, seven hundred dollars. I mean, it, it, in terms of paying for an abortion, and a then hotel. for uh, a hotel room and for uh, bus fare, and then the days of work that you can't miss. I mean, this is again, will rich people? be able to go get an abortion if they live in Arizona? Yes, they will. Mm -hmm. uh, will your average person who doesn't have $400 worth of savings in the bank account be able to get one? No, no, that won't happen. I mean, he's completely out of touch. But the idea that like this is pro-choice, it's not pro-choice. This is not pro-choice, but they are so terrified of the American public paying attention to this issue that you've got to slough it off. It's fascinating. It's, it's an fascinating. And here is, yeah. um, here is, is uh, Donald Trump uh, just from uh, uh, moments ago on a uh, tarmac in Atlanta claiming. Now, of course, let's be clear. Donald Trump is going to say anything at this moment in the same way that Katie, uh, um, the Carrie Lake, the, Carrie Lake said two years ago that we should revert to the 1864 law in Arizona when she was running for governor. And then uh, yesterday says, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. No, I'm a totally against it. They will lie. They are desperate. They are cornered and they are desperate. And Donald Trump's afraid to go to jail. And if he's got to say, I would not sign an abortion ban, uh, a ban uh, on my desk. Uh, if he's got to say that, he'll say it. And he knows he knows that his uh, evangelical and uh, Christian and Republican followers, they all know it's the same thing where he's going to come out and say, like, OK, maybe they're not white supremacists. I don't think Nazis are good. You got to say that. And they all know he's got to say it. Go ahead. President what do you Trump, say the Republicans feel disappointed by this statement on abortion? No. What do you say? 
So him saying no there, that's a very, qu- the very quick clip of that, uh, that he wouldn't sign a national abortion ban if Congress sends it to his desk. Yeah, that's about as, as far as he's going to go in terms of saying that. Although, it's, you know, it's possible he could say it in some, uh, I don't know what outlet. Maybe he'll say it on Truth Social, but it's very hard for him to go on to a uh, conservative outlet and say that he wouldn't sign uh, an abortion ban. Well, he'll um, say leave it to the states, right? I mean, and first of all, he's lying. We know that Donald Trump is, as you said, Sam, uh, a world record holder liar. So don't take anything he says at face value. But um, yeah, I mean, he's he'll say states' rights, but the reality is, is that one, we know they're lying about that. Um, because they said states' rights for all this time, and then Lindsey Graham, months later, introduced a federal abortion ban um, outline, enraging a lot of Republicans, because like, you're being too honest. You're being too honest about what we're trying to do. They much prefer what Trump's doing, 100%. You gotta slow walk this. Yes. Um, and um, uh, and, and the, the bottom line is once you uh, lose Roe v. Wade, which he has taken uh, great uh, lengths to ta- claim credit for uh, Donald Trump, and he, you know, he deserves it. He shares it with Mitch McConnell um, and frankly, and shares it with, uh, I don't know, 75, 80 percent of the Republican Party. I mean, this is what the Republican Party has been chasing for decades, for decades. Here is Lindsey Graham. Um this is from the uh, Hill, but uh, apparently uh, this is what uh, Lindsey Graham had to uh, say to the Hill in terms of uh, Donald Trump coming out and saying um, it's a state's rights issue all of a sudden. Um, here it is. What's this? Uh, and then is there any more to that? Scroll down a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a written okay. quote. Do you want me to read this, Sam? No, I got it. Um, I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's rights issue. Uh, he said in a statement responding to Trump and uh, he did not add, but I will. Uh, I'm in South Carolina and um, um, I will get primaried. <laughs> um, Graham, however, argued that the pro-life movement has always been about the well-being of the unborn child, not geography. The science is clear. A child of 15 weeks is well-developed and capable of feeling pain. He said, I will continue to advocate that there should be a national minimum standard limiting abortion at 15 weeks because the child is capable of feeling pain with exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother, which also uh, makes absolutely no sense. Like, I mean, how do you justify that? This is the civilized world's position. No, it isn't. That's he reiterated that 47 to 50 European countries have national limits on abortion between 12 and 15 weeks. But these uh, you know, supposed limits are not even remotely close to the bans that we have in this country. No. Um, it's much easier, much easier to get an abortion through uh, the, uh, the second or third trimester. Um, let's go to uh, Trump reacting to Lindsey Graham on uh, Truth Social. He says, I blame, I blame myself pop, pop, pop for Lindsey Graham. The, uh, pop it up. Here we go. Because the only reason he won the great state of South Carolina is because I endorsed him. People forget that um, Lindsey Graham ran for president in 2016. <laughs> and yep. uh, Trump gave out his cell phone number. He literally uh, handed out his cell phone, like announced it on stage. And then uh, Lindsey Graham had to get rid of his cell phone number. Well, I think this was also in the wake of uh, Trump attacking his his uh, best buddy, John McCain, saying, right. I prefer soldiers that don't get captured. So that was what got Lindsey Graham to say that he was xenophobic, that he was anti-Muslim, like what came out swinging and then has now become the biggest Trump sycophant in the Senate to a degree, I guess, except for now we're back here. Um, and just to buttress your point about abortion again, over 90% of abortions happen in the first trimester. 98.7% of abortions are performed during the first 20 weeks. Late term abortions are for fetal abnormalities, life of the mother, and these exceptions, all they do is put doctors in legal jeopardy and put those patients in jeopardy um, because those are for the, that, that subjectivity and that ver- those very rare instances don't need to be legislated because a, n- no doctor is performing late term abortions like this unless 
the life of the mother is in question in that way. So all it does is it just puts puts a chilling effect on abortion versus what about what about after being they're actionable. Born? Right. What about after they're born? Yeah. What about right. after execution they're born? after they're born? Uh, here is uh, Donald Trump getting um, a very um, uh, well, and and, and I, I'm of two minds here, but uh, Trump says. Senator Lindsey Graham and Marjorie Dana Felser, that's uh, the uh, head of the Susan B. Anthony pro-life president, um, should study the Tenth Amendment and states' rights. When they do, they should proudly get on with helping Republicans win elections rather than making it impossible for them to do so. I I mean, I, I think this is a good opportunity for Donald Trump to pretend like um, he's not as extreme as I mean, look. I don't know that he has any ideology. I do know that when he gets elected a president, he is going to rely. The president has power without a doubt, but he's going to rely on the Republican Party. He's going to rely on the Republican Party to provide him with political and administrative and uh, support uh, and the Republican Party is going to demand this if they have uh, the Senate and the House. And I'm quite convinced that if they have 52 senators, they will get rid of the filibuster and they will do it for this in particular. They will do it for every single individual thing that they want to get rid of the filibuster for. Um, and Donald Trump will sign that bill. Uh, this is the most, I think, predictable thing in the world. 